thousand sloppy at a time from here. That's good stuff from this one. This one is uh, four feet deep, two thousand gallons. So uh, there's no sloppy in it right now. It's actually a large amount of bass in it right now um, because we're building we built a bigger one. So we're in this. I took the heater out of the system and turned it into a cold water oven. Same energy. I'm not very efficient to heat a small space like this. So the bass need no heat, and how many, yeah, no. uh, you said 2,000 tilapia fit in here, how many um, bass will fit? I could probably put about 500 in here, but I have 200. Yeah, about 50 degrees. Right now. So the exact barrel will be Actually, you could less bass than the last Well, um, yes. They sort of they eat each other, so you have to have more space with all those like the great duck. So you'll put more screens in there like that to separate the sizes? Uh, but you can see how uh, all these tubs and everything is kind of homemade here. All these tubs are part of the biofilter. System. You can see a bathtub back here that has fish pond water flowing into the, the gravel beds. And it's just uh, gravel and worms are in the beds. These flood and drain on the cycle about every 12 minutes. And then we can just kind of plant the rest of the collard greens have been there all winter and they're about ready to uh, flower. But How does the draining system work? Um, this is a siphon. Um, and if you look in there, you can see there's a standpipe. The water will rise to that level, and by putting this, this kind of over top of it, you can see it's a few inches taller than the standpipe. So the water level rises here, starts to go down the standpipe, and this air pocket um, that's in here creates um, a lot of pressure. So the, the water actually rises faster on the outside of the pipe than it does on the inside. So when the water does start to trickle down that standpipe, um, this air pocket gets sucked down the tube and out, and you can see it, this one right here. Most of the time, when we had tilapia in here, this whole greenhouse was basil. All these tubs were filled with basil. Because that's the most profitable thing to grow? Yeah, and it grows really well. And um, basil, of any plant, basil is the plant that needs the least amount of nutrients. So um, they can, basil can thrive pretty much just off of fish waste. So um, something else like collard greens or lettuce, you're also having to add? Yeah, we add worm compost. To so this tray here is all worm compost um, from our worm bins. And, you know, Fish waste generally doesn't have phosphorus or boron or any of that stuff. So we add water compost and then close in the gas. And when you say add, you mean put it in with the stones or um, actually add I, it on? Yeah, but we actually, I just throw it right on there. Um, you'll see in the bigger system where you're actually just filling pots um, with worm compost, planting stuff in the pots and putting the pots on trays like this. And that uh, gets the compost into the system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What are you feeding the bass? Mm -hmm. um, well, the bass are being fed a commercial pellet. Okay. Um, eventually, we hope to be raising enough insects that we can be feeding them that. Uh, but bass are a little tricky because um, they're a predatory fish and they're used to eating, hunting other fish that are only slightly smaller than its mouth. Um, so you have to really train them to take a pellet. It's kind of difficult. So they've mm -hmm. been fed to be trained, so we have to feed them a uniform pellet. A lot of How times do you have to train, train, train them? When they're real small, you put them in shallow tanks and crowd them real tight together and put a light over the water and just like constantly, and like eventually they get the idea of it. It takes wow. a couple of weeks. But, huh. so. Are the bass for eating or are they just the stock? Um, it's okay. an experiment, but um, I'll be eating them. I'm experimenting with them to see if it could potentially be a profitable fish. I know that bass have become a thing in Asian markets. Um, Asian people like them, and we have lots of Asian immigrants around here, and they actually grow really fast, in about nine months. So, um, so it's they, about the same as the tilapia? Yeah, a I mean, they, they take, there are a lot more inputs, like the tilapia converts a pound and a half of food into one pound of fish, mm -hmm. um, which is amazing. Um, bass is like seven pounds of food for a pound oh, of fish. Oh, that's so quite on par with like a cattle almost. Yeah. Wow. Is the price significantly higher to make bass? If you have to buy food for them, it would be, yeah. It's cheaper as far as utilities are concerned, because you're not, like the tilapia, we need to heat to 86 degrees with mm -hmm. the water, so 
We were talking at lunch about that, the profitability over, of a cold water fish over, a, over something like the Yeah, I mean, most easy. cold water fish are more finicky, and um, they require, like in North America, we don't really have many native fish that eat vegetable matter, right. a lot of carnivorous fish. Um, and so they're, you know, cold water fish generally a little trickier. They don't, they aren't as hardy as tilapia are, but um, at the same time, if you wanted to do something with low energy inputs, um, cold water fish would be the way to go. As long as it wasn't a trout, because then you'd have to be using energy to chill the water. But like a bass or a perch, you could have in sort of a natural, hmm. natural heat. Hmm. Oxygenation come from the plants and from this? In this, in this particular system, it's just from the just that. pump fresh area. Yeah. Yeah, there's just one pump that's moving the water at all. all and where is it located? So it's it's pumping both up to oxygen yeah. We're only using about half of the pump's pressure to move water around, and the other half I'm using to aerate. So hmm. Anyway, hmm. the system's really simple and cheap, so. but it works. We're in the midst of emptying out all these bins, but um, I'll show you over there some full bins. But we've been taking all this worm compost out over to the new system, but uh, we compost in big piles outside, and then when it breaks down, after about four months, then we fill these bins with compost, mm -hmm. and then the worms break the compost down further. And then we scoop out that compost after two months in a worm bin, sift it out, and I'll show you over there some of the fresh castings. That, um, we use it in potting mix, we use it as fertilizer, you can make compost tea with it. Mm -hmm. It's great stuff. So there's a bunch of aloe plants that got a little cold this winter. Mm -hmm. Still alive. Yeah. They made it through last winter. Is it because this winter this building wasn't heated? Yeah. And water coast sheep, when you have a market for that? Um, well, I just found someone yesterday who claims they want to buy it all, but up until yesterday, I haven't been able to. It grows like crazy. It's the easiest thing to grow, and it's delicious. Uh, 